And I return with more meaty walls and things, watery tunnels. What is it? What is it? What, what, what? So not. Oh! That thing has come up in here. Go away, I don't want to play with you. Stay away, go away. I don't want you here. I reject your offer of friendship and hugs. Okay, let's continue on, on our merry way. Chaponto box. Let's slightly evaluate the situation. What's going on? Ah. Let's try to get this way. I can't tell if the splatters are from me or the beast. Water. Where am I supposed to go? This way? Whoops, I should have closed the door. I would have closed the door if I had no my Go to the back hall. Can it be time to stop this silliness now? I am not very much interested in messing around with this creature anymore. Oh, thank you. That's nice. So, barely conscious. Just bleeding. At least my sanity is crystal clear. This place looks pretty. Hmm. What's this? It's a corpse in the water. Well, half a corpse. Oh, wait. No, that's the lower half of this fountain. I I think that's not the most beautiful piece of furniture I have ever seen. Oh, what's is this bottle? Oh, it is. Uh, no, it's not a bottle. It's a shape. It's a pattern, but not of the puzzly kind. Okay, let's investigate the door that opened. Because I'm apparently supposed to follow the red markings, right? And this corridor has no red markings. You have an ascending room. Will it take us to the inner sanctum? It will definitely take care of the vertical part of our journey. So, you have ridden an elevator before? Yes, the Colosseum at Regent's Park has one. It takes you to the gallery where you can view the panorama. Good. This ride might be a little longer. And in the other direction. So there's a lift here? What? Why is there a lift here? And it goes down? What am I supposed to do right now? No idea. 
this goes to the machine room. Oh, and the bleeding has calmed down. There's additional rooms up there. I have no idea where to begin. This goes downstairs to storage. I honestly don't know where I should even begin. Additional chambers upstairs by the looks of it. There's a path to guest room and study. Right then. I suppose I could initially try the elevator, see what exactly is the problem, why I can't use it. It's not working. Well, that's detailed. Hmm. Well, in that case, I'll check the upstairs for the rooms first. They seem more inviting. Uh, let's start with the study. Is this another dream? He thought and screamed at the top of his lungs. So apparently someone has been locked up in a chest in the study. No? And that's what it sounds like. Okay. I wonder if there are any enemies in this study. Somewhere. Well, there better not be. I'm not into enemies. Don't really like them. The game is perfectly fine handling things with ambience. I don't need enemies. Yeah. Okay, I light the candle. Relax. And I'll hold the Bible in case some sort of monster straight try to attack me. The holy world, world will keep them back. To my most trusted and to my most trusted student and friend, Johann Weyer. The most remarkable things happened as I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer. I finally found one of the orbs. I should actually look into how to pronounce this Prussian Prussian thingy. I finally found one of the orbs I have been looking for the last 20 odd years. It is as in inexplicable as the heliodromus described in the Hortus Conclusus, it was as it was told about an underground Mithraic temple crowned with the unearthly artifact. The orb was big enough to fill my cupped hands and the texture was smooth and jagged. Its color washed while rich. Contrast is not enough to describe its nature. It was an impossibility, an artificial paradox captured within stone. I was staying in a nearby village called Altstadt, investigating one of the anti antiquated trails, when I finally found the cavern. I went inside and suddenly I could verify the truth of these enigmatic artifacts. They were real. As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of my life, but it has, it has also become my greatest fear. As I entered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my curiosity, I did my best to fight these in instincts. 
and fetched the orb from its place. I scrambled out the chamber and into the woods. Out of the chamber. Scrambling out the chamber. But, but I could sense something was following me. It paid loudly as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. I made my way to a nearby ravin where I stumbled upon some men fishing in the lake. I tried to warn them as I passed, but fortunately they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard their cry of pain echoed through the valley, I had such a tremendous sense of relief, thinking I would be spared. Suddenly a blue shimmering light engulfed me and the colors of the forest were washed away before my eyes. I kept running through the bleak surroundings, the trees had turned charcoal, black with leaves of cinder, the ground covered in murky water. I pressed on through the drenched land as the glowing ember gave away, gave way to the rising wind and rained on me. I could hear bleeding screams in the distance, and they joined in as pain and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground, gasping for air. And sipping for tea. This certainly must sound strange, but I had been carried miles away across the Alps to a grassy field outside Genoa. The guardian had taken the orb from me, but still until this day I fear its return. Sometimes I lay awake at night listening for the howling cry I heard in the forest. It has been nearly a decade since that day and I still haven't been able to write about the incident. The last time we spoke, you told me about your interest and ongoing research into the mythic orbs and I realized I owed you the truth about my visit to Alstad. Your friend and mentor, Henrik Cornelius Agrippa. Hey. Oh. And of course, the public version is that he has never been to Alstad. And did my oil run out? I thought I was being perfectly fine in that regard. Okay. Timmy? No? Anyone? Bob? Jimmy? James? Anyone here? There's a collapsed pub here. Find another way around to Ravel in the study. Is it that important? I suppose I could go from here. That looks sense making. Canis Lupus Familiaris. 1658, April 12th. After a short study, it is clear that the agitation found among humans can be found in the dog. Fear and pain induce stress, which seems to trigger an endogenous response, causing the animal to burst with energy. I believe that the catalyst is produced in the brain. It is difficult to determine exactly where and what it is, but I can sense it. It reeks of cosmic genesis. There is an inherent problem in harvesting this energy since the creature is bound to die from the exercise. I must refine this process of torture to enable any real work to be done. More experiments must be performed, but it seems that only human beings are able to produ produce the amount necessary. It might be their ability to appreciate the severity of the process that's, that ultimately augments their experience of terror. What? The What were those small messages? Oh, understanding balance, the canine jaw, milestones of human anatomy, understanding locomotion. Let's see what you have to offer. <coughs> it's a puppy's head. <coughs> and the bunny. Whoops. Funny jumped away. But I can sense it. It's definitely there. 
canine spine. More puppy pictures. Can I lift this one as well? Nope. What a sloppy job. You can see the guts. Seems. Suppose he was not the master of that specific art. 1658, January the 9th. Further disappointment, the antiquarian's latest findings yielded nothing. I am still unable to grasp the inner workings of life and its relation to the power I sense within it. I shall pursue more books on the subject, but I suspect it will be in vain. Since no research has been made in my particular interest, I must attempt to fill that void myself. Clearly humans eman emanate more of the energy I seek, but I hope animals will suffice as they will prove less of a hassle to acquire. Okay, let's grab some tinder boxes and anything other useful. Right. So we can assume this statue is not built to scale. Despite the fact it's being it's taller than me, it's not to scale. That is kind of hot. Okay. So my business in the study seems to be done for now. Since we don't really have anywhere else to go. Let's break all the glass with a bunny. The bunny glass breaker. The true at the dog. That's nice. the end of this episode as well. Next episode I will go to the guest room and the storage if I have that much time. So thanks for watching, see you next time.